Welcome to Your Voice, Your Choice. My name is Marcia Smith. I would like to really, really let you guys understand what's going on here today. We have a very special guest. His name is Chef Eric Wells, and he is a personal chef around in the Cleveland area. You may have seen him um, out and about, or maybe you had his services. Um, today we're going to talk about some very healthy dishes that you might want to put into your... I don't know, maybe have one evening with your, your maid or have with your family. So we're very, very excited. It's per your request. You asked for them, now you have them. So stay tuned for Chef Eric Wills. Marinol, an American Catholic organization of priests and brothers, has been reaching out to those in need for nearly 100 years in 26 countries throughout the world. Missioners, workers, volunteers, supporters, we are all Marinol. I'm Father Mike, and I am Marinol. 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 Welcome back to the show. As you know, my name is Marcia, and I would like to welcome Chef Eric Wells. Hey, Marcia, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. It's a pleasure being here. So I understand we're going to make some delicious, healthy food today. It's going to be delicious. I, I'm going to try to make it healthy, but uh, it's going to be delicious, more delicious than healthy. Okay. I heard <laughs> that you're known for being healthy. So, I don't know, are you being modest or? I'm trying to be modest. I, um, you know, I've been blessed with a wonderful gift and um, I just enjoy cooking. I enjoy uh, teaching people how to eat better and uh, eat healthier. So, give us, for the people who don't know you, but I'm sure that everyone watching today knows exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the, the people who don't know who you are, just give us kind of like a backstory and how you got started in um, being a chef. Well, I'll give you the long story. Uh, not too long, but I... Um, Started, I became a chef in uh, 2004. I graduated from culinary school. It's a school out here in Chesterland, Ohio. I graduated from there, and again in 2004, and ever since then I've been a, uh, a private chef. So how did you know that you had what it took to be a chef? How do you know, <laughs> I want to be cooking up some food? Well, I've always had a passion for the culinary arts. I've always had a passion for food. Um, I tell people all the time, my uh, first thing I ever made was, uh, I was eight years old, and I made uh, chicken cacciatore. It was like chicken and chicken juice and tomato sauce <laughs> everywhere, but um, it, it came out really good, and ever since then I've been hooked. So eight years, since eight years old, I knew I, this is what I wanted to do. Wow, that's fabulous. Yeah. So I want to know right now, mm -hmm. what is your absolute favorite dish to make? I am a, I'm a steak person. I'm a huge steak person, so I love to make bone-in ribeye. You know, a nice, you know, inch thick bone-in ribeye, you know, cooked to like medium, medium rare. See, I can eat it like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. you know, some nice roasted garlic mashed potatoes and some, you know, some asparagus. That's a great meal for me. Yeah, I love mashed potatoes. <laughs> Can't have them that often, but they're tasty. <laughs> yeah, amen, amen. <laughs> so, I understand, okay, I hear you saying the steak and the mashed potatoes. That's mm -hmm. your favorite to make. What is your most requested? I, um, what I do is I do intimate dinners for two. And um, my most requested menu is my, um, my surf and turf. I do an eight ounce lobster tail, 12 ounce New York strip, um, served with like a baked potato and broccoli. Um, and that's probably my most popular uh, popular option. Yeah, I think I can get with the surf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. So do you do any like vegetarian type uh, meals? I, I do. I've had a couple of clients who um, wanted to do vegetarian. Um, you know, difference between vegetarian and vegan. Uh, vegetarian is a little easier because we can use some you know, um, milk products and things like that. Vegans, you don't use anything. Um, so, um, you know, I've done some clients like that, but not a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting when you when you get into that, um, trying to shop around and make sure that the products are 
know, strictly vegetarian or vegan, right. depending on the client. Because you really have to get into reading the labels and making sure that everything is mm -hmm. um, not really kosher, but up to the standards of being a vegan. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could ever uh, do it entirely <laughs> vegan or veg even vegetarian? Because that's difficult. Yeah. It's, I'm, it's, I'm what you call a sometimes vegetarian. No, not me. I, you know, I love steak way too much to do vegetarian myself. But um, again, if my clients want it, you know, I try to provide it for them. So, if someone wanted to do something quick and they wanted to be snazzy, mm -hmm. what kind of seasoning could they just throw on some chicken or something and make it <laughs> make it seem like you know? I, mm -hmm, well, I get this. <laughs> it's funny you mention that. Um, what I tell people all the time about seasonings. Is, is, you know, play with your seasons. I, th I think a lot of people, especially a lot of African Americans, we get into um, just salt, pepper, and Lowry salt, you know, yeah, a Lowry Lowry's. season. You know, <laughs> try different things. There's many places in the area where you can go and taste different seasonings and see how things pay, pair well. And as I mentioned, I love to do Moroccan food. So I love Moroccan spices, you know, cumin, cardamom, you know, some um, cinnamon is a great spice to use in Moroccan cooking. And, um, you know, a lot of times I like to play with those with some nice chicken breast, mm -hmm. pan seared into the oven for a couple of minutes, and it's wonderful, really good. You were also talking about northern Italy, or yes. northern Italian. Mm -hmm. What are some of those type dishes that someone might be familiar with that we can relate to? Yeah, when people look at Italian cooking, um, especially a lot of Americans, we just think Italian cooking is pizza. pasta, pizza, <laughs> pasta sauce, you know, things like that. Italy is broken up into 26 different regions, okay, so it's different foods for different regions. I love northern Italian cooking because it actually uses a lot of things from the, the land, you know, not because obviously you're not on the Mediterranean, you're up in the land. So I love things like uh, risotto, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you heard of risotto, uh, risotto is made with arborio rice and it's a dish that comes from northern Italy. So. Really simple, easy. Well, it's not simple, but it's a, a great dish to make. It takes a lot of time to make, but I make like a uh, a wild mushroom risotto. That's mm -hmm. phenomenal. <laughs> Use about four different kind of uh, mushrooms, and again, it's really, really good. So you're talking about geography, mm -hmm. and you're a chef. Mm -hmm. Now, did you do this on your own? Like, is this something that you wanted to be knowledgeable about so that you can talk to your clients? And you know, because that's very um, that's a good selling point. Because you're talking about geography. <laughs> yes, definitely. You know, and the thing about it is a lot of people, when, um, when we talk about food, you know, I think a lot of people aren't really knowledgeable about where it comes from. You know, and, and that's one thing. Now, thank the Lord for blessing me with this wonderful gift to, to teach more than just cook. You know, and that's mm -hmm. one thing I love to do with my clients or when I'm teaching cooking classes is teach, like you said, geography or, or, or teach history on food and how it kind of pairs mm -hmm. with everything else. So do you see that that works well when you're actually... Um, teaching a couple um, how to make a dish, or do you also go in, into like um, um, class type situations where you're teaching? So that comes into play. Yeah, definitely. I do the, the couples cooking classes also. So where I go into a home with a couple, and we uh, we kind of learn a, a regional dish. You know, Italian, like I mentioned, um, Moroccan, Thai. You know, all different t kinds of foods, and we get into the history of the food also. So we're gonna get more into it. Um, right after this break. So. I'm a big believer in the power of we. It's time for you to raise your hand. Go to serve.gov and get involved in something you believe in. We weren't born to follow. Are you with me? Hi, my name is Marcia, and we are here with Chef Eric Wells, and you're watching Your Voice, Your Choice. And he is going to tell us now the dish that he is going to bless us with today. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have for us today? What are we going to be making? What we're going to make here, Marcy, is a simple, easy dish. We're going to make a blackened salmon. Uh, we're also going to do a uh, mashed potato, and we're going to do some asparagus. Uh, really simple and easy. Very inexpensive, too. This entire dish, probably for a family of four, is less than 15 or $20. So uh, very inexpensive, but a really good dish. That's really good. Now, I, I know you... You hear a lot about blackening this, blackening that. Mm -hmm. What is the history? What, what does it come from? Well, blackening spice um, actually it originated from uh, France, you know, and when the French settlers came over to America um, and they kind of went through the Caribbean and then into the, um, you know, New Orleans, Louisiana region, uh, they brought their spices and herbs that they picked up in the Caribbean over here and they just kind of started making their... Uh, blackening spices here with the Cajun and a Creole type of cooking. Um, what I do, I make my own little uh, spice here. What I do here is I use a little cayenne pepper, 
I use some um, I use some salt, pepper, uh, black pepper, white pepper, and um, then just some um, dried up thyme in here, okay? Instead of fresh thyme, I use some dried thyme here, and um, that's basically it, and it's really, really good. I'm sure it smells great. Yeah, you... Now, what you can do here is when you're making this at home, you can actually make this, put it in a Ziploc bag, kind of keep it in a Ziploc bag for about six months, and then you can, you know, throw it away after six months. But, you know, if you use it a lot, you're not going to use it for, you know, it'll be gone after six months. So, so you said with this uh, blackened uh, fish, mm -hmm. we're going to have, or we're not going to have, we're going to prepare mm -hmm. uh, some mashed potatoes and some asparagus. Exactly. What are some good options that you can switch up with the blackened Fish. Oh, definitely. I mean, you can use this on chicken. Um, again, we're using salmon a day. You can use, I use it on like a halibut, which is one of my mm -hmm. favorite kind of yeah, fish. Halibut. Nice thick fish, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you can use it on a uh, sea bass. It's really, really nice. Um, but fish or, or chicken is usually what you want to do this on, or any type of poultry. Um, I would stay away from obviously some any type of red meat, mm -hmm. uh, any type of beef or, or uh, lamb, anything like that. But yeah, this is wonderful on any type of poultry or, uh, or fish. Okay. So are you ready to get started? I am ready to get started. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, what I like to do here is, first of all, I have my salmon fillets. Um, two really simple, easy salmon fillets, skin off, okay? And what I like to do here is take some oil, a little oil on each side. What I'm going to have you do, Marcy, if you can, turn on the heat um, to about 7 on the uh, cast iron skillet, please. Now, meanwhile, what I'm going to do here is take my oil. I'm going to rub it into my fish on both sides. Now what this oil is going to do, the oil is going to actually act as, you know, almost like a glue for my blackening spice here. Is that olive oil or what this, kind of oil is This that? is just regular, um, regular vegetable oil. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going to grab a paper So what do you think about olive oil? Do you think that's something, because everyone's on the olive oil <laughs> thing now. Is it mandatory? Because obviously it's not. <laughs> it, it is actually. Oh, I, it is? Uh, okay. I use a lot of olive oil when I'm cooking. Actually, I use three different kinds of olive oil. Um, I use a regular extra virgin olive oil, which I don't cook with. I actually use it for salad dressings mm -hmm. and things like that. I use a regular virgin olive oil that I kind of saute with and things like that. Then I just use a regular olive oil. And you can actually deep fry and do things like this with regular olive oil, mm -hmm. not extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, this is my black and I'm just kind of putting it on my plate here. I'm just going to kind of toss it here in my... Toss my fish in it, okay? And we have that, that pan going, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. I, I'm not playing you like, you know, like I'm Gordon Ramsay. I'm not screaming at you or anything. Oh, no. <laughs> he, ooh. I like him, though. <laughs> I like him, too. I like him, too. So you see how this is properly coated? Nothing, you know, just a nice little coating on it. Now, what's going to happen here is when we, um, when we actually pan sear this, all that seasoning is going to kind of lock in there and just give it a lot of good flavor here, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's look at our pan. Let's see how hot it is. Don't try this at home. <laughs> just seeing how hot it is. Now, what I'm going to do is add a couple of tablespoons of oil. Okay. And Marcia, if you can bring that fish over here for me, please, Ron. Absolutely. Okay. Use this here. Thank you. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is just kind of add this in here, and I'm, I want to hear that sear, that sear, and it should, mm. that's that, that sound I want to hear, okay? Now you have to be very careful when you're doing this at home, because what we have, we have cayenne pepper in here, and when you're heating anything with cayenne pepper, the flavors, or that actual pepper kind of pops back at you. Oh, wow. okay. okay, so we're going to kind of let that go, kind of step away for a little bit, okay. kind of wash my hands, so I'm going to touch with fish. Okay, so from there, while that's going, we're going to let that kind of pan sear for about three or four minutes on each side, and we're going to, it's going to be pretty much ready to go. Um, with my potatoes, I just have a regular, regular um, Idaho potato. This is a peeler, kind of in any group, any store, and we just peel the potatoes. And then what I did here was, I kind of cut them into, you know, a nice little, like halfway or a quarter, and put them in boiling water. And then after I put them in boiling water, boil them for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. This is so, for the mashed potatoes. This is for the mashed potatoes, okay. yeah. And then they basically come out simple and easy. So then that, I use a little cream and a little butter. And here are my mashed potatoes. Very simple and easy. Oh, okay, really so mashed, you get your potatoes, you peel them, mm -hmm. and boil them. Boil them. Salt, pepper, 
and cream. And cream and butter. Okay. And that's it. You can add a little garlic salt to it if you like. I want you to taste these, Marcia. Tell me what you think. Oh, oh no, you didn't ask me to taste the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you can taste them there real quick. Tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Now, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, what I did here is I used my hand mixer when I do this. A lot of people like to use like a ricer or they have the, the smasher for your potatoes. I like the hand mixer. Makes them a little more smooth, okay? Yeah. Okay. Really good. Thank you, thank you. Tastes so, really good. Thank you. So let's go back to our fish here. Let's see where we are. Now I'm going to show you something here with you. You see that color there? Oh, yes. That's the yes. color I want. It's like a nice dark not too dark, but it's just a nice dark color. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like you would have to keep your eye on this because if you don't, you could kind of mess up your beautiful fish. Yeah, you can. But again, two, three minutes on each side. Mm -hmm. I like my fish to be about, especially like a salmon, I like mine to be like a medium. It shouldn't be cooked all the way through. Mm -hmm. So I like it about medium. Maybe another two or three minutes on this. This would be perfect. So what we have here also, we have our asparagus. Asparagus. Um, what I did was, I'm sorry, I peeled the asparagus. Actually, I'm going to do this. Put this over here. I peeled the asparagus. And then I want to go ahead and just put them in a little salted water for a couple of minutes. Take them out and serve them. It should be really good. So, I mean, this seems very, very fun, especially for couples. Tell me a little bit more about your intimate uh, <laughs> meals for two. Um, the intimate dinners for two. What I do is I go to a couple's home and I do a four-course menu. White linen tablecloths, candles, flowers, everything. I provide the china, the silverware, the cookware, the food, of course. Then I clean the kitchen afterwards. So it's really nice and romantic. Uh, it's like going to a five-star restaurant but having it in your own home. So no stress, no fuss. No fuss, you no stress. You just sit down and eat. Exactly. You know, exactly. Just sit back and enjoy and just let me serve you, you know. So I think our fish is pretty much ready to go here. I think it looks great. Yes. You see that color on it? It's mm -hmm. really, really good. And again, I'm using a cast iron skillet, so um, you can use a non-stick skillet if you like, or just a regular aluminum if you like. I like the sear that a cast iron gives you. Now, this is just gives me a good insight to, you know, you go to, you know, the restaurant, Red Lobster, you're sitting there waiting for your salmon. Did this you took say, us, what, 10 minutes? Did you say Red Lobster? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> did I just say you something horrible? You just offended me. No, no, no. <laughs> what, what I'm saying. I understand. You go there, you spend your time sitting there waiting for the food. This took us what? Less than 10 minutes. So, I mean, it took us about five five minutes to make it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's great. And I it's, mean, it's really People good. probably don't know it's that, that simple. It's as simple as can be. Okay, great. Okay. So, so we're going to go ahead and we have our asparagus kind of lined up here. I'm going to hit this with a little salt. And again, we're using kosher salt. See, now, kosher salt is not sea salt. No. There's, so, there's three different kinds of salt. Basically, there's your iodized salt, which is your table mm -hmm. salt. We have kosher salt and sea salt. Sea salt is used from the sea. You know, they use evaporated water from the sea, and that's sea salt. Kosher salt is actually Jewish or made by, you know, Jewish people, and it's actually more of a pure salt, okay? Um, and then uh, iodized salt is salt that's made with iodine, and it's got like a kind of a metallic taste to it. Um, I love kosher salt. You can use sea salt if you like. I like kosher salt. I love the pure flavor of a kosher salt. Okay, great. So we have our asparagus. What I did was I peeled some asparagus. And we're going to kind of drop it right in the water. And just a real quick two minutes in the water. It's pretty much ready to go. Here, okay. And while that's going, I'm going to start kind of plating. Well, you know what? When we come back, okay. we'll see. So, we'll see. I mean, you know, guys, check us back um, after the break. The people of Iceland know how to live. The men are number one in longevity in the world, and the women are third. Part of the reason is the active lifestyle. Iceland uses geothermal steam to heat homes and outdoor swimming pools, leaving the air clear and clean. Iceland is very young in geological terms, and everywhere there is the sense of the landscape still being formed. There are 10,000 waterfalls. Iceland, pure, natural, unspoiled. Come see for yourself. Welcome back to Your Voice, Your Choice. I'm Marcia, and you know we're here with Chef Eric Wells, and we've so far made some blackened salmon. 
We've also made some uh, potatoes. And now we're going to get into the asparagus or mm -hmm. see the finished product of the asparagus. Yes, the asparagus is pretty much done. What we did was we put it in a little uh, boil water with a little salt, a little uh, kosher salt, as I mentioned. And then that's it pretty much. Look I put it color. Yeah, just a really bright color. Mm. The problem with people, when they cook a lot of green vegetables, they put it in the water for like 20 minutes and they just let it boil and boil and boil and it turns this color. It turns <laughs> gray from that color. So all the nutrients gone. <laughs> exactly. You're exactly right, Marcy. Right. If all the nutrients gone, you want the green color. Um, and again, that's nice and crisp and ready to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I see you have some bread here. What, what kind of bread is this? This is just a little like French baguette. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is just quickly serve this with our, our meal here. I'm just going to kind of cut off the ends. I'm going to cut it down the middle, I should say. Mm -hmm. and so, it, you said this is a French baguette? Yes. Okay, and people normally just have this as a, it's just an, another thing to add to the dish? Exactly. What okay. I like to do, I love bread when my meals, um, my hips don't like bread with me. I sound like a woman <laughs> saying uh -oh. that, but you know. But uh, no. I, I love bread with my meals. So, mm -hmm. um, what I like to do is kind of do like an open face here um, with the bread. Kind of dress with a little olive oil. I'm gonna grab some olive oil. Okay. There. And um, and then what I like to do is just kind of toast this off, 400 degree oven, for about three or four minutes, and it's pretty much. Are you pretty, yeah. now? Don't 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 hurt me. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Are you a fan of the George Foreman Grill? Um, you know what? The George Foreman Grill actually has its, you know, it, it has its uses. Okay. You know, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You know, it's really quick and simple and easy. You gotta put something there, put the salmon in there if you like. Not the blackened salmon because you won't get the blackened. Right. But um, put salmon in there, you know, a couple of minutes and it's okay. done. So it's that's my microwave. It's, just <laughs> it's right in there. You know, I know a lot of people that use it, so it's nothing wrong with it at all. Okay, you know? good. I'm gonna hit this with a little cracked black pepper. A lot of people are like, wow, cracked black pepper on yeah. bread. Great flavor. Really? Wonderful okay. flavor. Okay. So I'm gonna put this in the oven. What I did here also is I put my salmon in the oven just to kind of finish a little bit. Um, the salmon's in there at about 400 degrees. I don't want you to mess up your hair, so I'm going to move you out the way. Thank you. <laughs> That's my salmon. It's pretty much done. I'm going to put my bread in. You know, watch my bread finish there. But meanwhile, what I'm going to go ahead and do is start plating our meal. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. That would be great. Okay. So what I have is I have a pretty little square plate mm -hmm. here. So my knife Do you get there. into the all with... You know, I don't know if you're big on desserts, but I, I know a lot of times you see them doing the little... The drizzle? Yeah, the little I, drizzle. This is my drizzle. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> this is just a little pesto. You know what's coming. This is a little pesto <laughs> oil. I like to just kind of go right around the sides with the pesto. Okay. And it gives it a little flavor. An artistic you know, look to it. A little look to it. You eat with your eyes first. It's the first thing they learned and they taught us in culinary school. So, um, kind of stuck there, but... Um, <laughs> with your so eyes for we'll okay. that one yet. <laughs> so what we're going to go ahead and do is put our mashed potatoes down. I like to go with just like a little dollop of mashed potatoes in the middle. Okay. It's so creamy. It looks like ice cream almost. It looks good. I've never heard that before. Thank you. <laughs> my mashed potatoes look like ice cream. I said almost. I'll be putting this on my <laughs> Facebook page tomorrow. My mashed potatoes look like ice cream. Okay. So what we're going to go ahead and do is Grab our fish spatula. Okay. Okay, we're putting our fish right on top. Okay. A lot of flavor there. Okay. Mm. Right there. So, do you shy away from the, the oils that's in there? Like, are you. No. no? Okay. No, you live once, you know, so. Mm. And then what I like to do is the asparagus right on the side. That looks beautiful. Okay. Check that out. Right there on the side. Mm -hmm. And then if my oil would work right, we can have the drizzle of the oil right on top here. Um, but that's pretty much it. I um, I love this kind of dish here. Very simple and easy. Um, Marcia, are you going to try? Or are you going to eat on the air? Are you asking me? I am asking oh, you to eat. yes. How can I refuse? Here. I, I have <laughs> somewhere for you. Now, okay. I want, an honest, I have, want an honest opinion. Now, if it's awful. Don't say anything. But if it's really, really good, <laughs> tell everybody, honest, okay? That's honest. That's honest. Don't it's say anything. Honest. Okay. So you know I got to start with the salmon. Got to start with the salmon. Let's see here. It's very tender. Mm -hmm. That's really good. You like that? You mm -hmm. taste all the flavors in it, the cayenne, um, 
for the, um, is there, the time. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I like asparagus too. Okay, go ahead. So, so, asparagus. Again, the asparagus is really, really crunchy. Um, you probably want to use a knife. <laughs> um, or won't, won't get it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, again, it's really crunchy. Um, again, not overcooked so, because we put it in salted water for a couple of minutes. Might not even a minute. So great Perfect. flavor in that. You know, we have the mashed potatoes once you taste it. Again, mm -hmm. very simple, easy dish, guys. Try this dish anytime. Um, you know, try this dish at home. And again. So you said a family of four. Mm -hmm. This can run you under fifteen. Under about under fifteen, under twenty dollars. Yes, that yeah. that's definitely a winner, right? There. Especially Healthy in this food. economy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have more with you after the break. So you guys join us back here after the break. I'm a big believer in the power of we. It's time for you to raise your hand. Go to serve.gov and get involved in something you believe in. We weren't born. Are you with me? Plant inspiration. Provide youth with the creative tools and skills to cultivate it. And you'll be amazed at what can grow. Adobe Youth Voices in the Peapod Foundation. Learn more at plantandinspire.org. Welcome back to Your Voice, Your Choice. This is Marcia, and I'm here with Chef Eric Wells. And I don't know if you're hungry. What does that mean? Uh, I don't mean to be mean, but um, this dish right here is so delicious. It's beautiful, very healthy for you. And um, I wanted to ask you, with your intimate meals for two, mm -hmm. Have you ever had a situation that just kind of got out of control or um, something crazy happened? Well, I had one. It was um, some Valentine's days ago. Um, I had a young lady that asked me to come and do something for her and her boyfriend. It was a surprise for the boyfriend. So um, I came over, set the table. It was beautiful. We were listening to some Chardet. Great singing, you know, flowers everywhere. Um, the guy walks in the house. She failed to tell me that the guy was like, Six four two seventy five, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like five eight on a good day. So, a dude walks in to see a man in his house with oh, his no. woman. Dude wanted to beat me up immediately as soon as he walked in the house. He was like, "Man, what's up with you, man?" I'm like, "Hey, I'm here to cook for you and your girl." And I was steadily looking for my chef's knife at the same right. time, like, "Dude, I can carve you up." You wow. know? But it was funny because I'm serving courses. So, mm. um, after I got to the appetizer. You know, he came in the kitchen with tears in his eyes, like, man, I ain't never had anybody do nothing like this for me ever. Wait, wait, wait. You know, six, six, four. Six, four. How many tears in his eyes. Oh, wow. That tears meal had to be good. I think it was okay. <laughs> I think it went well, you know. But uh, that, that was crazy. That was really crazy. Wow. So, you know what? I don't want to forget about our bread. Let's get our bread. So, we have our little bread with a little olive oil and some black pepper. You know, again, we're just going to kind of put this here. I'm just kind of stack it up here and that's pretty much a, a finished dish there a full um, you know and it, it's really really simple and easy um, again under twenty dollars for a family of four really good so now we're coming towards the end Aww. of our show mm -hmm. I wanted to give you the opportunity um, to tell the people out there especially the ones who requested for you to be on here they got they had to have mm -hmm. chef Eric Wells so give them some of your contact information and how they can experience your <laughs> lovely meal for two. well you can hit me in a couple of different ways. Um, you can Google or uh, Yahoo search Chef Eric Wells. Uh, the name of my business is Skylar Rays Culinary Services. Um, what I do, uh, Skylar Rays is actually my oldest daughter's name. Um, I named it after my older daughter. My younger daughter is not too happy at the business name after her big sister. But uh, Skylar Rays Culinary Services, um, you can go to my website. Uh, www.scholarays.com. You can hit me on Facebook um, under Eric Wells or Scholarays Culinary Services, or um, you know, just give me a call 216 254 2808. And you guys know your significant other would really, really appreciate something like this. And you know, I wanted to know what's your youngest daughter's name because we have to say hello to her. <laughs> Her name is Nina. She was actually Aww. named after my mother who was in heaven. So oh, I, I named wow. her after my mother, named the business after the older one. So. That's beautiful. Yeah, a little That's balance beautiful. there. <laughs> so thank you so much for yes. being here today. It's truly been a pleasure. It really has. 
And um, this is a fabulous meal. And I want to thank you guys for watching the program. My name is Marcia. This is Chef Eric Wells. And you're watching Your Voice, Your Choice. And we will see you here next time.